effortlessly and joyfully slipping through the sea. Streamlined like a dolphin, streamlined like a whale, weaving, diving, bobbing, smoothly gliding, effortlessly through life, slipping through the sea. I want to glide through the open sea, side by side with you next to me. Oh, and the timing's right, you glide right back to me. I want to slide through the ocean blue, I'll ride beside you to In unity, in harmony, in joy and in love, you drift into the depths of the deep blue sea. Sayonara. <laughs> but it'll say good day to you this day of your time. How are you all? Uh... <laughs> all right. All right. First and foremost, we thank each and every one of you individually and all of you together collectively for the co-creation of this interaction and the allowance of this transmission. We would like to begin this transmission by discussing the differences in that we are now beginning a new series of transmissions, a new phase of transmissions, starting with this one, that are going to include more interactivity between us and all of you. As you say in your language, more hands-on interaction for the purpose of solidifying, crystallizing the link, the bridge between your world, our world, other worlds, to accelerate and crystallize the vibration of contact. So we begin this new series with this transmission that we have called the Sedona Vortex Array. And what happens in this transmission, and from this point forward, will determine the feasibility of where you are with respect to the vibration of contact as a society, and will allow us to gauge when you are ready for more. So, we begin this idea with this concept of the array as an actual physical task that will be undertaken by a few people physically in terms of the construction of the array, but all of you and more will be capable of participating in utilizing the array as a focal point through the meditation exercise we have also delivered to allow everyone to participate who is willing, who's excited by it, to add their energy to the overall experience. The purpose of this being to use your intention in combination, in harmony, in synchronization, to add your energy to the frequency of the main Sedona vortex, which our ship is above, to increase and accelerate the frequency of the vortex and specifically tune 
the vortex now to the frequency that is most representative of contact. That's what this exercise is about. Now, this first stage, this first phase, to use a word common on your planet, is a test. This is what you would call a dry run, so that we can allow you the opportunity to develop familiarity and some experience with this concept, and for us to gauge how clear the communication is received by you in terms of what it is you are capable of manifesting with respect to the accomplishment of this task, physically and in the meditation. So you can see there are very specific instructions, very specific guidelines for the idea of those who will physically volunteer to actually construct the array. But again, all will be capable of using this. For once there is a focal point, what you might call a technological simulacrum, a representation, a symbol, that the meditation and your intention can focus upon, then that will really begin the work in earnest, will really begin the shift in earnest of the vortex of Sedona. Now, the idea again is that this is a dry run, this is a test, but it will be important to make sure that the parameters, the guidelines, are followed, as you say, to the letter, for this will give us an understanding with regard to the future manifestations of the array, the future versions of it, in the upcoming phases of its construction, as to exactly how precisely you are capable of manifesting this technological simulacrum symbol, this permission slip that can be used to focus and harmonize your energy, your intention, your imagination, your visualization. The array as you are looking at it in your diagram is again simplified for now. It will become a little bit more complex in the future as we go forward in the different phases, it will become something a little bit different than what you're seeing before you. But this is the beginning. And the symbols are representative in general of certain frequencies, certain vibrations, certain energies, some of which you are familiar with and some of which you are not. But as you look at the central hex, you will see that this is basically a symbol that is representative of, specifically, the first contact specialists that exist in my family lineage. So this is specifically keyed to our frequency, this central symbol, because it is our ship that is above your Sedona area, above the vortex that you now are immersed in. So you will start with that, and in the meditation you will see how it will spiral outward into the next ring of hexes, and the symbols in those hexes, around the central hex, are generally representative of symbols for the five hybrid races that already exist, including my society, and the sixth hybrid race, which your world is becoming. Beyond that, in the outer ring, you have the symbols that people on your planet have chosen to represent the planets in your own solar system so that you have a vibrational relationship between us, the other hybrid races, and your solar system, your home world. So you will see for those who will choose to participate in the meditation, whether tomorrow of your time or in the future, you will see how the meditation takes you through these energies in such a way as to form a stronger link stronger synchronization, stronger harmonization between our worlds and your world, and your system, and your energies, and your symbols, and your intentions. Each of these will be symbolically represented and explained in the meditation. 
allowing you the opportunity to focus on each of those energies distinctly, discreetly, specifically, and bring them into harmony with one another and, in so doing, tune the energy of the vortex you are immersed in. Now again, those who will be participating who do not reside in the area of Sedona specifically will still be able to utilize this meditation to add their energy to the vortex and add the energy of the vortex to their own so that you are forming a network, a linkage, a web, if you will, of intentional focus that is all synchronized and this will have the effect of accelerating the vortex but also flavoring it to the vibration of contact. So this will be one of the first interactive exercises that we will share with you to help you begin to participate in a very real and physical way, taking your place a bit at a time in the interstellar alliance, now being able to exercise your membership with your participation in this physical way. But this is just the beginning. It will grow from here and grow and grow and grow until such time as you have allowed this vortex to be representative of contact with our civilization and you have created that bubble in which those interactions can begin to occur. Now, why this area? Let us talk about the idea of vortices and vectors. You may not have it right before you, but on your maps, you will see the idea of your state of Arizona next to your state of New Mexico, and you will know that with two other states, they cross in an area that you have named Four Corners. You are familiar with this? All right. That in and of itself is also a very powerful vortex. But here's the key. They intersect at 90 degrees. So if you offset a 90 degree vector, exactly cutting each state from that Four Corners area and drawing a line that is 45 degrees bisecting the 90 degree corners of the states. If you draw that 45 degree angle downward to what you call your Southwest through Arizona, you will see that that 45 degree line passes directly through Bell Rock. This is why that area is the center, the eye of the vortex, the master vortex of all the vortices in this area. And which is why we are using this in this exercise to aid and assist in the acceleration and the fine tuning of that vortex for contact. Because when you accelerate this vortex that is centralized around Bell Rock, you will activate and tune all the other vortices in the area to match the frequency therein. Now, if you look at your state of New Mexico and do the same thing by drawing a 45 degree line down from the four corner vortex to what you would call the southeast, this line will pass not only through your city of Albuquerque, which itself is also a very powerful vortex, it will also pass directly through another city in your understanding that has become kind of synonymous with the idea of what you call UFO activity, Roswell. So these two 45 degree vectors will connect directly to the four corners vortex and will have everything to do with the energy of contact for your world in terms of how these grids of energy are laid out. 
for that area. So in adding your energy to the Sedona vortex centered at Bell Rock, you are also in contact with the vortex at Four Corners and also in contact with the vortices at Albuquerque and Roswell, New Mexico to form, again, a stronger linkage to the idea of contact, both past, present, and future. Now, as you can see from your instructions, those who will ultimately volunteer for the actual construction task have specific parameters to meet and they will be contacted later to begin to be organized in the completion of that task. But all will be included through the meditation so that that power of intention multiplied by many, many, many of you will truly begin to change the energy in the area and create a new reality that will begin to grow like a bubble in which one day contact can occur. So, is this exciting? <laughs> Are you sure? Yes. Really sure? Yes. Oh, all right. Now, we will discuss this a little bit further throughout the course of this transmission, adding more information to this idea. But we may now, at this point, begin with your questions, if you wish. So commence dialogue in whatever way works for you. Hello, Bashar. And you good day. Hello, everyone. I feel, first I want to say that um, this was a perfect synchronicity for me to be here. Oh, all right. And it's just funny that you mentioned about New Mexico. Yeah. Because I just happened to come back from New Mexico. I was there for three weeks and all I right. had the pleasure of going to Roswell. Yes. And now I'm here spending this time with you. All right. Thank you for your synchronicity. So I am so excited. Um, all so right. my first question is, what can you tell me about Zion, the planet Zion? Planet? Or the galaxy, I'm not quite sure, but it was given to me in, um, in a dream that um, my uh, son was in this planet or this galaxy and that his name was Ontarian. First and foremost, please understand, all of you, the idea that there is no real such thing as originating from another planet. Okay. Because everything exists all at once. Okay. You and anyone that's living on the Earth originated on the Earth. But the idea is that you connect to other simultaneously coexisting incarnations going on at the same time that are other people in their own right but you make those energetic connections to download energy and information and experience from them so that you can apply that energy and information in your life to fulfill your theme, even as they may be downloading energy and information from your experiences in life in order to live their themes. So it's not really accurate to say that someone is from somewhere else in that context, but it is more precise to say what other areas of energy, what other simultaneous incarnational experiences do I have connections to? Do you understand? Yes. All right. So this brings the definition of these things into your modern age and lets go of old, outdated, and obsolete definitions so that you can understand the mechanism of how this works more clearly. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. All right. So what you are referring to is an idea of another dimensional plane, yes. And yes, you and your son may have connections to this energetically for the purposes of applying this in your theme of exploration here. But really all you need to know is that 
Whatever the challenges are you're facing in this life are usually representative of the themes and whatever insights that you may have about any other such connections you have only when you need to have them and at that moment you become aware of them, the question to ask is how can I apply my awareness of this energy and this connection in my life here? Good question. Thank you. Do you have a good answer? <laughs> How can I do that? How can I? What does the energy of that particular reality mean to you? How does it feel to you? Well, I think it had something to do with accepting um, that there we are. I'm a multidimensional being, and yes, that all, right. all these things are happening simultaneously. Yes, all right. Um, I had a couple of experiences, and what I was uh, informed was that I had a connection with the Pleiades. Yes, and that many I was, of you do. Yes. Many of you have connections to the Pleiades, to the Sirius star system, to the Orion star systems, to Arcturus, and many other things, including several hybrid civilizations, and also many things that are beyond that scope that is not necessarily appropriate for us to talk about right now. But nevertheless, all of you have many of these different kinds of connections going on because this is the time of transformation on your planet, and so you need to call on all of these connections to really dynamically infuse your life with the different kinds of experiences and awarenesses that you need to bring into the present, to bear in your awareness, to bear in your consciousness and in your intention in order to really manifest your reality in the way that you prefer to. So yes, many of you becoming more aware of the connections that you have, yeah. Yes. So, so what, I, what I thought that it was uh, two experiences of abduction, it was just preparing me to be more acceptant, um, acceptive of what it was coming or what Among I was... Among other things, yeah. Yes. And so? So it's great. All right. <laughs> and so, are you applying this in your life in an exciting way? Yes, I am. Oh, well, I will thank you. And I am thank you for, I'm thanking you for that as well. Well, I have nothing to do with it. You're the one applying it in your life. Yes, but you brought the message loud and clear. All and for right. that, I'm grateful. Well, thank you for allowing it to be loud and clear because many people on your planet are quite <laughs> deaf. Yeah, but that's up to you. Yes. Does this help you? Yes, it does. Thank you. Can I ask one quick other question? And I know that this is already a already question. question. <laughs> yes. You want to ask another one? Yes. Um, what can I do to uh, help raise my vibration as far as... Um... I thought you said you understood that you were acting on your excitement. Okay, fair enough. Does I'm that done. make sense to yes, you? Yes, it does. Thank do you. Do we need to explain how no. complete a kid excitement is? <laughs> no, I got it. <laughs> All right. Does that help you? Yes, it does. Thank you, Bashar. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, Bashar. How are you? Good day. Um, so I had a um, private session with you yes. last month, and and life changing, awe inspiring. Oh, wonderful. all right. Well, thank you for making yourself change your life. Thank you. And thank you for inspiring awe within yourself. Um, one of the things that um, the awarenesses that I had from it was that. Um, the process is everything and, and the process is the point and to understand that and always be aware of um, what my emotions are and what my beliefs are yes but one of the things I'm curious about is yes. um, even though you have talked about how there it can be instantaneous change from one reality to, well, actually, in fact, is always it instantaneous, is instantaneous change. It is instantaneous. You just make reality. it seem as if it's not. Yeah. Yes. So how does the concept or the reality of three dimensions... Four, actually, oh, in your yes. case. But the this... Three of space, one of time. Yes. So, oh, that helped. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so when you look at this... Me personally? Or me, I guess, All right. as an example. When I look out, yes. am I experiencing, even though I know this is now and the presence, 
Yes. Am I experiencing somewhat of the past of what my belief systems were were before the change? In other words, I can have a change in a belief system, but this doesn't look any different. Because you are constantly recreating the same belief system in the present. But if I find that I know, when we had this conversation at the private session, you said yes. you know that you've changed yes. by your reaction to what's here, out yes. here. That's how you know you've really changed, is that you respond differently to what's happening, even if it still looks the same. Yes. That's the first test, in yes. a sense. And so then, is a result of that test that this actually changes? It very often is, but the point is, is it doesn't have to. Yes. But so when I'm looking at this and I'm thinking to myself, one of the things that, oh my God, I laughed so hard when you were talking about somebody being courageous enough to go out on the street and, and they have an experience and they say out loud, you're not real, you're not real, you're not real, to get that um, reality of whether or not you want to experience this reality or not, whether it has relevance. Yes. And so I'm wondering if I'm looking at what's not real because it's the example of a past experience, I mean a past belief system that I don't hold anymore. Is that why this isn't real no. when you say that? No. None of physical reality is real except the experience of it. Yes. That's the only thing that's real is your experience. But physical reality on its own isn't real. It's a projection. It's inside your consciousness. It's a reflection. Oh, okay. That's all. The idea is that you can have changed your belief system and still, of course, be capable of observing other people who haven't changed theirs, yes. if that's the definition of the reality that you believe you need right now. Oh. <laughs> Does okay. that help clarify yeah. the issue? So in other words, it's just whatever I think. If I think they're not changed, then that's the reality I get to experience. Well, yes, because you see, the idea is that most of you are doing this, at least to some degree, together. Yeah. So you're still for a while, even if you change yourself quite drastically, you're still for a while going to be capable of still observing other people that are doing things that may be similar to what you used to do, because it's not yet time for you to not see those people anymore, because there is still value in you seeing them and them perhaps seeing you. Oh. So you will still create a reality in which you can still experience people who may not believe as you do, but you can simply observe them neutrally. They don't have to affect what you experience your life to be at all. You can just observe that they are going through their life and making choices, and maybe they need to see you because if you're acting as a perfect example of living your life to the fullest, then hanging around for a while gives them at least an option and an opportunity to see in you what they might be able to choose for themselves too. Yeah. Make sense? That's nice. Yes, it is. Oh. Very nice of you to hang around and not run ahead of everyone. Well, it's kind of fun, too, because it all is. of a sudden you go, oh, my God, that's just so funny to me. And before, I might be very emotionally upset. Oh, please believe us. It's absolutely hysterical. I seriously <laughs> believe that. I've experienced it. Cracks you up, and you're just like, It boy, does. <laughs> I wouldn't have laughed at that before, but... So, does this help you? It does. And I would like to um, ask about the meditation for the array. What I would like. It? I would like to ask what array means. I don't know what that... An means. assemblage. Oh. A pattern. Oh. Something that is arranged in a particular pattern. Okay. Yes? In this case, we're actually talking about, ultimately, a physical object. You're looking at the diagram. The diagram is composed of 19 hexagonal objects all put together in that larger diagram. So that's the array? That's the array. You could say it's another word for arrangement, if you okay. wish. Okay. Does that help you? Very much so. And yes. so then if we are finding that we won't be at the meditation tomorrow night. But you still will be able to do the meditation at the proper timing when the remainder of the information is delivered, 
in tomorrow's uh, meditation exercise. Ultimately, it will be available to all to participate. This is a project that's going to unfold over time. So and so whenever you have access to it will be the proper time. And when the array itself exists as a focal point permission slip, then it will be most capable of being the focal point for anyone who does the meditation at that point, at that time. So the meditation, it sounds like you're saying the meditation may be available for those who can't come tomorrow night yes, later? Yes, of course. Okay. And so it might be in my best interest to go visit the spot? It's up to you. You have to decide if it's in your best interest. Yes? Yes. Your interests are your own. So, it's up to you. Thank you. The spot, by the way, will probably be there for quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe, oh, I don't know, hundreds or thousands of years. I think you have time. You're so funny. <laughs> Does that help you? It helps me out. All right, well, thank you. Thank you. I would just like to thank you for all the information you give to everyone. Wait a minute, what happened to hello and good day? Hello and good day, Bashar. And good day to you. I would just like to thank you for Speak everything. Speak up and be bold so that all may hear what you have to share. Yes, sir. I would just like to thank you for everything you've done for everybody in the room and in the world. I have done nothing. You have given information. Yes, and I brought have, but that doesn't to mean everybody. you have to take it. <laughs> well, I'd like to. All right, well, thank you for everything you've done. <laughs> And I know you got a lot of specific questions, but I was just wondering if there's anything you feel compelled to let everybody here today know. Oh, believe me, if there was something I would tell you, I would. And I have, and I will. And also, is there any way that I could bring myself more to get in contact with you and your family and the ship that's over Sedona? You've heard us talk about the idea of acting on your excitement, yes? Yes, sir. Do you understand the principle? Mm-hmm. So you understand that if you've made appointments for this life and arrangements, you will not miss any of them if you just get on about the business of living your life to the fullest, correct? Yes, sir. Then that's all you need to do. The only way to miss an appointment that you've made is to spend your time and energy wondering or worrying if you will miss the appointment. That's the paradox. But if you just get on about your life, living it to the fullest, acting on your highest excitement to the best of your ability with no insistence on a particular outcome, then you will propel yourself forward with the automatic guidance principle that excitement is, and anything that needs to happen and anyone you need to encounter will unfold and appear in perfect timing, and that's all there is to it. You just have to trust the way your life unfolds. Yes? Yeah, that I answered a lot. Maybe that was something I needed to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Does that help? Yes, sir. Anything else? And you don't have to keep calling us sir, unless, of course, it gives you joy to do so. I'm from the South. I'm a. The South gentleman. of what? North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> south of the United States. Oh, I see. All right. Well, then, my good sir, my fine gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> or should I just call you Billy Bob? <laughs> <laughs> Which is not to say that's not a fine gentleman. <laughs> that was it. That was all the information I needed. All right. Well, thank you for your sharing. Thank you.